Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is a, uh, is a belated overview for World War II Operation White Box. Uh, this is from Small Niche Games, and um, you know, as I was going through my shelf tour, uh, which have been following my shorts, you've, you've seen these, and um, so I was uh, currently on my the sixth shelf of my bookcases here and just finished up the bloat games section of that shelf and they came across world war ii operation white box which uh is dated back in 2015 i'm not quite sure how long ago i actually got this but um you know it was it was something i was really excited to pick up and uh, because I was always a big Twilight 2000 fan, and so the opportunity to play um, utilizing Swords and Wizardry, which is another game system that I do have and have actually played. And, and so I picked this one up, um, put it on my shelf, and uh, over the past several years, uh, just never got around to actually playing this and uh or running it and um you know so i i am i am certainly guilty of having more games on my shelf that i can run uh but i can certainly give them uh some airtime and eventually um i i could definitely see myself at some point uh, running a one shot of this um and you know it might very well be the type of game that really does play well in a convention space which is always something that i've uh you know it's a metric i've been using to evaluate what games that i buy and what games do i look to run and so on so uh it could certainly find its way into my uh into my rotation um other than just buying it for simply the theme that is something that i'm really really stoked about um the other connection I have to World War II, obviously, uh, is that uh, my father was a World War II veteran. I've spoken about that on the channel as well, especially around uh, Memorial Day. And so, uh, you know, the idea of, you know, I played Twilight 2000 and then, you know, a few years later joined the U.S. Army in 1990. Um, you know, so my connection to... Um, my connection to just service and and you know World War II and 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 games associated with them is, is kind of there. So, without further ado, let's just do a, a slight overview of this. Uh, and I will spend some more time in in the next uh, couple of days and weeks or so um, breaking down the system in a little bit more detail. So I am going to switch to the PDF. And so here we go. Operation White Box. Now this is written by Peter C. Spawn, which I believe might be the brother of, uh, of James Spawn. Uh, so, um, and James Spawn was the writer of um, Operation White, uh, no, I'm sorry. Peter Spawn is the Operation of White Box and uh, his brother James, at least I think is his brother James, is associated with a lot of uh, uh, the uh, bloke games things as well. So anyway, uh, let's move on. So here we have the um, the writer, the artwork. Uh, let's see if anybody jumps out to me that I've come across, uh, you know, quite a bit. Um, special thanks to... Many, many individuals, Matt, uh, Mike Fitch, um, not Matt Finch, Matt Finch is, um, is connected with uh, Swords and Witchery, obviously. And this has been released in other, in other compatible with other systems as well. Uh, it is compatible with bloat games and it is compatible with, um, uh, one other system that's just slipping my mind right now. But anyway... So here we have a nice map of Europe, 1944. I won't flip it around. <coughs> James Bond, 
So I'm, I'm guessing James Bond is his brother because here he's doing the uh, the forward. So the Great Crusade. That's what General Dwight D. Eisenhower called the efforts to defeat the Axis powers. Now, now also remember, like part of the theme of this is that it is, and I will read its subtitle, um, or its subtitle or definition came in here. So this is a role-playing game of World War II Special Forces action. All right, and this particular one is designed with compatibility with Swords and Wizardry White Box. So we have starting the game, rule number one. Oh, well, that'll be interesting to see what they say is rule one. Your attributes, as you can see, there are the standard D&D basic uh, strength, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, dexterity, and charisma, universal attributes bonus, uh, and experience bonuses. And, and I will go into uh, some of those as well. Um, let's actually see what rule number one is first. The most important rule is that the referee always has the right to modify the rules. In fact, it's encouraged. There are gaps in the rules, holes that we did not fill on purpose because much of the fun of old school gaming is being able to make up rules as you need them. Sometimes this means just saying something as simple as um, roll a die. You don't want to roll low to more complex homebrewed charts for the smallest of details. Along the way, we'll make suggestions, explanations, and give ideas as to optional rules within text boxes. Feel free to use them or discard them as you like. This is your game after all. <coughs> they have different dice mechanics used for attributes. Um, there's the optional rule of distributing the attributes. Uh, so you roll 3d6 three three and then you distribute as you wish. I tend to do that. I also tend to, to roll 4d6 and drop the lowest. Um, your strength, your intelligence, wisdom, constitution, dexterity, charisma, universal bonuses. All right, all right so these are a 3 to 6 is a minus 1, a 7 to 14 is average, and a 15 to 18 is plus 1. All right, so yeah, really scale down the bonuses and minuses that uh, can occur in here, and most people are going to fall, or most characters, I should say, across their attribute pools are going to fall within that 7 to 14 range. Optional rule, advanced attribute bonuses. So you can use this as an optional rule and it becomes much more of your typical um, your typical attributes bonus that you see across most D&D uh, BX based games. Experience bonus, all character classes get to add their percentage wisdom bonus and their percentage charisma bonus on the experience points if high enough. Well, that's interesting. All right, then all characters get to add their prime attribute bonus from their class to the above. Some high values may even double this. Wow. So you could actually have some instances where your bonus is like a double experience bonus. That's pretty cool. Special forces operations we have. So the nationalities you can choose from are American, British, Canadian, French, German, or Russian. The professions you can have are either blue collar or white collar. This is obviously pre uh, being drafted or enlisted in the military. Um, and you have athletes, criminals, medical, military tradesmen, role two professions, or academic artists, celebrity, religious, uh, businessman, and role two professions. I wonder if you could pick one and one. Um, the profession, so uh, athletes excel in physical sports. All right, that's kind of understandable. Uh, this, I guess, will become their primes. Military rank, so you're either enlisted on a one to four or an officer on a five and six. Enlisted, they give you your, you're most likely going to be, on average, 
I guess you're going to be a corporal. Um, the private first class is actually more slated. I wish they would do the averages a little bit better than this. Um, you know, the have a one to two, then three, four, and then five and six, and the three, four would become the average uh, on a D6 distribution. You could be a second lieutenant, first lieutenant, or a major to start. Uh, who is in charge? There is no such thing as a typical special forces unit. They are often assembled for specific missions and yada yada. Um, I'll go into more detail with this when we actually get to uh, gameplay. Uh, note on gender roles. All right, so this is back in 2015. So let's see what they're going to say here. A number, a large number of women served in the military during World War II. However, they these were mostly non-combatant desk clerks, secretaries, switchboard operators, quartermasters, nurses, etc. Western culture was not yet ready for mothers, daughters, and sisters to serve on the front lines. That said, innovative special forces commanders quickly realized the potential of female agents. These brave women could quietly insert themselves behind enemy lines and blend in with the local populace while being overlooked and underestimated by German forces. What's more, many French women aided the resistance and many German women served auxiliary roles in the Nazi Germany. So certain classes like the Mar Marquis and Uberlofer are tailor-made for female characters. Russian women almost uh, also historically fought alongside their male content counterparts and many became renowned snipers, grunts, and wheelmen. The referee may even decide to buck history altogether and allow women to either form their own elite companies or serve alongside men in traditional military units such as the British Commandos or the U.S. Army Rangers. In short, there are no special rules for female special forces, PCs, allow them or not, as it suits your campaign. And then we get into character classes. And I, and I will save this now for the next video um, because I don't want to make this too long. This is kind of just an introductory uh, to it, getting caught up with the, uh, the belated overview aspect of the game. So there's, there's quite a bit there already just in that you know very short 12 minutes that I've spent and you can already see how much detail is already built into this game. Um, I am actually going to post this video sometime tomorrow. And then the, um, the short video of it on my bookcase and showing that will actually link to the longer form video as well. So you will see... Uh, this video will go up first, and then the, um, the video short will go up afterwards, but connect back to this long-form video again. Sometimes, you know, as I'm doing these things, I, I, was, I was taking my short videos, my, my, um, my shelf tour, and then attaching them to a related video. There just was no related video yet for... World War II Operation White Box. So now there is. So I'm kind of working backwards in order to do that. Um, kind of a military thing, right? Backwards planning. That's kind of basically what I'm doing here. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, I hope you find your way to this video by going through the short or vice versa. You can, you know, definitely check out this first and then go over and check out the short video as well. So, um, Enjoy the rest of your weekend. It is Labor Day weekend. And so, uh, like I said, this is going to post sometime on Sunday morning. So September 1st. And uh, you all enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a uh, great time. And I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or, screen or at a uh, convention sometime soon. You all have a great one. Take care.